Now we need to remember back to our UI scroll view lectures and think about the three steps towards achieving a successful delegate connection. Because in this case, we're going to be implementing both a data source and a delegate uh, for our UI table view. So to start with, step one, we need to tell our space data view controller, so I'm in the space data view controller.h file, to adopt two protocols. And they're going to be UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. So in order to implement these, we're going to go ahead and add a left angle bracket, and I can type in UI table view delegate, and I'm going to add a comma, and it's really important that I add a comma, as otherwise my computer program won't know how to differentiate between the two different delegates or protocols that I'm conforming to. So now that I conform to the two protocols, the next step is to implement the necessary methods. Well, let's start with our table view data source. Let's go to our help and go to our documentation API reference. You can go in and type in UI table view data source and select the protocol here. So it's a protocol reference. And we're going to be able to scroll down and we're going to look at the configuring a table view. And we see that there are two required methods. Well, if we think back to our table view controller, we actually had to implement both of these methods, specifically self or row at index path, which returned a UI table view cell. So we can click on that. And we see that it returns a UI table view cell object that we use to display on our table view. If we scroll back to the top here, so we see that we have another required method, which is number of rows in section. So here we're able to tell us how many rows in our table view we should have. We can also take a look at the UI table view delegate to see if there are required methods in this protocol. And we see here as we scroll down that there are no required methods. So to start with, let's take a look at the managing selections area. We see that our table view will select a row at index path, did select a row at index path, did, will deselect or did deselect. So we have quite a bit of methods here that we can implement to figure out, is the user selecting an index path? Are they about to do this? Are they about to deselect a specific row? And we can find out that information from the UI table view delegate. We also see managing accessory views, and we're gonna be using the method name accessory button tapped for row with index path. And this will be one we'll need later on. And we'll be able to use this method to tap an accessory item, which will show up as a little blue eye for information on our table view cell in order to display our detailed information about our space object. Again, if you have some time, I would recommend scrolling through this list and just seeing kind of what table views can do. Um, it's really a great idea to familiarize yourself with the Apple's API and documentation so that you won't write, wind up writing a lot of code for no reason there's a strong chance that Apple has done a lot of this functionality for you already. But anyways, we have two methods that are required in order to make our table view work, and we remember that those were both in the UI table view data source protocol. So let's go ahead and go back to OW space data view controller.m, and we can implement both of these methods. So below did receive memory warning, we're gonna go ahead and add a pragma mark, which we remember was just a way for us to organize our methods, and we're going to be adding UI table view data source methods after this pragma mark. So the first method we're going to implement is self or row at index path, and this method returns a UI table view cell. So we can type in UI table view cell care star, and we're going to type in table view, and we're going to see that it automatically fills in the self or row at index path. Well, how does this view controller know this method exists? Well, by conforming to the UI table view data source method, we now have access to this method, or this class knows that it can implement it. So we can type table view and hit return and add our curly brace. And below it, we're going to implement a method for number of rows in section. And this method returns an NS integer. And we can type table view in again. And we're going to select number of rows in section. And we can add curly braces as well. So notice that both of these methods are throwing a warning. And that's because both of these methods expect us to return something 
Our first method has to return a UI table view cell, and the second method has to return an NS integer. So the returning an NS integer is fairly simple. We can just even add a placeholder in to make this error go away for now. So we can type return five. So we'll just return five cells for right now, and we'll just make that hard coded. But returning a cell, the best way to figure out how to do this is to mimic what we've seen before. So let's recreate what we did in our UI table view or our OW outer space table view controller uh, class. So let's type static and a string cell identifier identifier, and we're going to say this is equal to data cell. And we're also going to go ahead and create a UI table view cell object. In order to create this UI table view cell object, we're going to tell our table view to DQ a reusable identifier uh, for index path. So we're going to pass in an N string here. And this will just be our cell identifier that we created before. And the index path is going to be our index path that gets passed in here from our method. Finally, we can return that cell and we see that this method now no longer has an error. So what's, what's going on with our first line of code here? We'll notice that in our first line we were just creating an NS string called cell identifier. That's the variable name. And we change it to be data cell because this is more descriptive of what our cell is displaying. Notice that we also have a keyword static here, and static means that the variable will be kept around for the entire lifetime of our application. So when our user opens it to when, it, when our user shuts the application down. The second line of code here is just creating a UI table view cell, and what we're doing is we're checking our table view on our storyboard and looking for a UI table view cell with the identifier data cell. So let's go ahead and go to our storyboard and update just that. So we can go to our storyboard here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find a table view cell. We can drag that in, and we can change its identifier, reuse identifier, to data cell. We're not quite done setting up our table view yet, so let's go back to OW space data view controller.m. Let's go to the cell for row at index path method. And let's set up a default text label for our cell to make sure that our, our, our cell is working properly. So let's simply set its value equal to data. For now, we'll hard code it. And we'll make this dynamic later. So we have one last step, and we've had quite a few steps to get this properly set up. But it's okay because we're going to be using table views so much that we'll get used to this process. So remember, we need to set up our view controller as our table views delegate. Last time when we used our UI scroll view, we wrote some code that said something like self.scrollView.delegate is equal to self in our view did load method. Well, we can also do that graphically in our storyboard. So let's go to our view controller and we're gonna make sure that we have our table view selected, which we can confirm in our scene outline here. And we're also gonna make sure we have the outlet connections or the uh, connections inspector open, which is the far right uh, tab over here, and we're going to select the delegate first, and we're going to drag this over to our view controller in our scene, the space data view controller, and we see now that we this connection is hooked up. We're also going to hook up our data source in the same way. Now, it's really important that you make sure you connect to the view controller and not some other element inside of your view controller. If for some reason you hooked it up to view, for example, and you knew that that was incorrect, you could press the little X here to remove that, and you could hook it up properly to your data view controller. Now there's one final step, and that's this view controller is not hooked up to other views in any way. So how do we hook it up? We can plus press this little unmagnify thing here. We can also close our console area. We can scroll over to our UI navigation controller, and this arrow tells our, our computer program where to start our application. So if we move our arrow, we can just drag it over to our space data view controller. When our application runs, the space data view controller will open first. So now we can run our simulator. 
and we'll be able to see data five times because we've created five rows of data and that's great because that's the information that we wanted inside of our table view.